Welcome to stage three, the Palace of Hate. It's cause the Japs hate everything that they named it that. It's a palace of hate. And now we're seriously going to fuck this place up. Isn't that right? Fuck yeah. All right, I'm done. I went off on my tangent. Now I'm back, back on track. Now this level is actually one of the longest levels in the game. It's not so much difficult, it's just that it's got some tricky parts to it, which this isn't one of them. There's like, I think there's three sections to this level, and this is basically power-up central, alright? As long as you can avoid the enemies, which aren't too tough as you can see, you're gonna get pumped up, which is a good thing. More power is good, right? More power! <laughs> now, the key to making it through this area, well, other than the area where I'm crouching here, but the key to making it through this area, and which is good advice for any level, I must say, is to basically just keep jumping and keep your little spin shield thingy going. Kind of like that. It makes you, well, damn near invulnerable to anything that pops up. Now this is the basically a very short part of this level. I have no idea what the hell those things are. They look like Buddhist monks or something that are praying, except their legs are made of fire. I, I'm not quite certain. Maybe the, I actually I think that's what they are because of the uh, upcoming enemy in the next area. But we'll get to that later. Buddhist monks, evil monks in the palace of hate. Who would have thought? Oh wow! Guess what? We got a Sora. Kills every enemy on screen. Not one fucking enemy on the screen. Now this is the tricky part of this stage. There are multiple paths you can go here, and you see the, that like that little rock statue up there? What you want to do is you want to find the one that's eyes are flashing. Alright, you want to walk into it. And not to mention you want to look out for the ones that come to life and jump all over your ass. Oh, and by the way, see that little red bastard up, here, up there? He is one mean motherfucker. He's called a Tin Goo. Now, basically they've got like giant dick noses and they're fucking bastards in Japanese folklore and they live up to that shit here. Just think of them that you would like the Red Ace of Super Ghouls and Ghosts. They're basically the same thing, like that little cocksucker likes to drop out of fucking nowhere and just kick you in the fucking head. So yeah. Oh great! Another Asura! And why? Because there's no enemies on screen, of course. Now, the statue with the glowing eyes will always be in the same place, so just follow this path here. This one's kind of actually tricky to find, but that fucking tin goo is wiping my health out. And it actually causes me to die during the fucking boss battle here, but yeah, you just jump into the statue with the glowing eyes and voila! Boss battle time. And different music too, I might add. The music in this game is actually alright. It's actually pretty decent for an early for as early a game as this is but anyway back to the boss battle now what's the name the name of this boss is gobo in the english translation but the japanese version he's called get ready for this fierce liquid he's not that the boss itself is not that big of a fucking deal as you can see because he's too fucking stupid to turn around Blame the programmers, people. But that's what he's got his little bitches for. They come, they, they actually come up behind me. And in the American version, you can spam the attack button and still turn around. Not in the Japanese version. You actually have to stop attacking in order to turn around, which means it, it takes more time, and thus they have a chance to actually, actually hit me. And hence why I died there. But. I guess it's alright, because I needed to show what happens when you die anyway. If you die in a boss battle, when you come back, the boss starts out at like half health. Your spear is powered down one level, but since I was at the max level, I still have like the little super crescent thing coming out, and yeah, well, there you go. That's that. See? Piece of fucking cake. If it hadn't been for that fucking tin goo, I wouldn't have died either. And that is actually a boss where none of your special weapons work by the way, so you may have been asking that, no need to ask. Oh, a web spell. 
Oh, and goody, another cutscene. Oh, joy. Azumoto gradually walks up to the stoned maiden as she comes to life in a weird yellow light. Oh, shit, Amoto. Now, see? Now, that's what the hell I'm talking about. How the fuck does he know she's a human? He had to stab the other one to find out. Come on, that's probably a fucking... One of those gigantic testicle tanukis, man. How the hell did he know? He's a stabber. At least be consistent in your methods, Emoto, for fuck's sake. And she's going on about how Gobo took the key to her master, to his master or some shit, and she's holding a white ball for some reason. Makes no sense. But neither does this. She apparently has the powers of telekinesis, as she is obviously levitating my spear above her head. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. You dirty-minded bastards. Anyway, up next, stage four.